What's up everybody, Alex here, and welcome to the Dota Underlords Best Builds of the Week, the weekly series where I show you guys top 5 meta builds to help you rank up in Dota Underlords. Now this week, I'm starting with Voids, Assassins, and Spirits. I cannot believe the number of games that I am seeing where Assassins are completely uncontested. It blows my mind. Guys, this build is absolutely ridiculous. It is so good. Brawnies are all over the place right now. People are forcing Brawnies like there's no tomorrow. And guess how you counter Brawnies? With Voids, friends. Voids, they hard counter Brawnies so bad. Even if you're not finished Voids yet, add a Life Stealer in there. And, uh, you know, he'll help counter the Brawnies. He's going to Life Steal for a percentage of their health. Excellent uh, counter until you get to the Voids. But, guys, this build is so fantastic. Um, I actually did a, a full gameplay of this where, uh, you know, I breeze through the opposition because of how effective this build is. I'll link it at the end of this video. But, overall, it blows my mind that I've been saying for weeks that assassins are top tier and people have been just kind of dodging them. They're not going assassins and it blows my mind. Guys, this is a damn good build. You gotta go assassins when given the chance. And the nice thing about it is with the assassins, you got the spirits which help to uh, lock down a bit. Uh, you have uh, you know several kind of crowd controlling abilities. You have the uh, the Chrono Cube, of course, from the Faceless Void. You have all out attack Eno's stun, who I do prefer in this build. Um, you know, you have a whole number of things. You have the silent uh, silence from Earth Spirit. In the end of the day, you also have um, you know Spike Carapace from uh, Nyx Assassin. There's a lot of stuns, a lot of crowd control here, and it allows for you to bait them forward. Right, you can even set up Nyx here if you want, but I really do prefer to have Nyx on the edge here. They usually step forward a bit, um, and what ends up happening is uh, you stun them with Nyx, you stun them with Eno, you silence them with Earth Spirit, and then you just Delta Slam them until there's nothing left. An absolutely, truly, remarkably effective build. And the second build of the week is Six Hunters, Knights, and Vigilance. I've been having so much damn fun with this. This build is just so good. It's so good. And even if you can't get to Six Hunters, going to Three Hunters and then going Best Available is A-OK -okay as well. There's a few things I want to mention here. The only way this build works is if you pull the Antlers. You need the Antlers. The Crown of Antlers are so damn good. What I would suggest you do is you do put it on Luna here. Uh, Moonshard technically has more DPS than uh, the Antlers, but Antlers is still a great item. Uh, Mask of Madness, also a great item. If you want to be really cute with it, what you can do is you can actually get Mask or uh, Moonshard on Luna and end up putting the antlers on someone like Sven. He has a really slow attack speed, which is generally not recommended for hunters, but when he, when he procs that hunter bonus, oh my gosh, watch out. He's going to completely clean up in the front line there. Uh, but anyways, you got to pull antlers in order to get uh, this, uh, this build working well. Um, of course, you can add Medusa in there for whoever your lowest uh, hunter is, whether it be you know someone like Terrorblade or even Windranger if you feel like it. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is a truly fantastic build because you have the front line of the uh, the knights, right? You got four knights, you have the heartless effect, and you have the, uh, the, sick, the vigilant effect. And the great thing is, another mandatory item is the desolator. Desolator is so key for this build because with vigilance, what's going to happen is, is that Drow Ranger, who is, has a passive ability, is going to be applying... Uh, the Desolator effect onto everyone that is being targeted by the Vigilant bonus. The result of that is they're going to get a negative 5 armor effect. You're also going to be going, uh, you know, Enthrall in Essex. She's key here. Um, if you can pull her, you grab her. Because once you have uh, End of Medicine and then you add Enthrall, so you're adding the negative armor from Enthrall, you're adding the negative armor from Desolator, you're adding the negative armor from Heartless, and suddenly you are just melting teams. And they can barely get to your squishies here because of the, the Knights. The Knights are there protecting your squishies. Perfect, right? And the best thing is, if you got Pudge, if you're against the Pudge, sorry, uh, and they pull, they're going to pull Marana, and she's just going to jump to safety. So that's why you have Marana in that position there. Wind Ranger has a nice uh, far uh, attack range, so you put her there. Uh, you put an Essex here because Beastmaster is going to run to engage in the fight later, and her archer is going to spawn here, which is going to protect your squishies. Anyways, guys, an absolutely fantastic build, one that I highly recommend. And for the third build of the week, we're going Spirits and Mages. Guys, this is an absolutely fantastic build. Uh, mages and Spirits have been so damn good. Uh, spirits have been so consistent in this meta. And what you're doing here is actually has a lot of similarities to the first build with the Assassin I showed you. Instead of running uh, Nyx Assassin, you're running Tidehunter for very similar reasons. Tidehunter is going to step up. You're going to bait them forward. Uh, when they engage, he's going to have a ton of armor, a ton of health, and he's going to stun them with his Ravage, much like Nyx, Nyx Assassin with his Spike Carapace. That's going to allow your, uh, your, your uh, Spirits to engage as well. They're going to get their mana up and they're going to Delta Slam the center of the board. Uh, you're going to get something like a Blink Dagger perhaps on Ember Spirit in order to time those... Uh those uh, Delta Slams, and you're running multiple Storm Spirits here in order to have uh, take advantage of the uh, low cooldown on Ball Lightning so that you can stack Delta Slams together over and over again. You're putting uh, Crystal Maiden in this corner here. You're not putting uh, 
Keeper of the Light because Pudge is extremely popular right now, so you don't want him getting pulled. Uh, you can get Crystal Maiden pulled, she'll get her Frostbite off, and then she'll die, and it's okay. But overall, a fantastic build. If you really want, as a ninth unit, you can go Slardar. Uh, Slardar is going to give you the Warrior and the uh, the Scaled bonus. Um, I would actually position him probably like this. That's fine. You can put Slardar wherever you want. It really doesn't make a difference, as long as he's the primary focus of damage. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, you can add Slardar, or what you can do is you can add another Spirit in there in order to maximize the number of Delta Slams you're getting. It all depends on the RNG and what your opponents are doing. And as I hinted at earlier in the video, Brawnies are in this meta, and they're here to stay. Brawny builds are absolutely one of the top builds you can do right now, but there's a couple of major concerns you need to worry about. One, contention. A lot of people are going Brawnies right now. If you're seeing a lot of people going Brawnies, you gotta stay away from them, because you gotta get them snowballing early. Now, there's a few key things going on here that I really want to kind of bring mention to. First of all, if, don't, don't get too greedy with Dragon Knight. You can definitely run Viper before that. I do think that Snapfire early with a Viper is important, because the Dragon Synergy, Snapfire is gonna help carry that early game uh, and you can honestly three star snapfire it's hard now because of the amount of people running brawnies but overall you know you can run snapfire and if you don't really want to run snapfire you can put dk and viper in but you're going to be wasting all that added health from snapfire so you're more likely to keep snapfire in and take someone like viper out to put the uh, dragon knight in the other thing that i want to kind of make mention of is the brute bonus you spread them out so they can apply the bonus there i do like doom because doom's uh well doom can be game breaking if it hits someone like a lone druid or the, with a refresher orb uh but the thing is, is there is currently a new change. Uh, there's a, a patch note where Ogre Magi at three stars has a chance to multicast Bloodlust. The nice thing about that is that, uh, first of all, he's pretty tanky. He has a lot of health. Not only that, but in the early game, he can help to get to uh, cast a few Bloodlusts and really help to amplify the damage of your existing brawnies and help them get more kills, finish more fights. Bloodlust has a fantastic ability to kind of really push your DPS, and brawnies need that push, especially people like uh, Beastmasters and uh, Bristlebacks. Uh, units that you'll have early in the game and don't forget the impact that sapphire will have on uh you know with uh with bloodlust because uh his the, the scatter shot shotgun blast it procs on every four shots so basically the faster she's shooting the faster she procs that ability and the more kills you get so a lot of interesting considerations here i also do recommend you run the two warlocks it helps to give that little bit of healing that uh that uh, the brawnies lack, uh, you know, uh, you're going to be running Disruptor anyway because it really helps to, well, disrupt the field and uh, spell casting. And Necrophos is a great healer. It'll help to provide a lot of healing. I do recommend uh, all, uh, not all attack. This is Let's Go Crazy Hobgin. I do recommend uh, uh, support damage dealing Hobgin for the reason that with brawnies, you tend to get very extended fights. And the result of that will be that, uh, you know, Let's Go Crazy is going to proc. Most of your team should still be up. And then you're just going to steamroll the opposition. So I do like Let's Go Crazy. Uh, you know, Eno's a good option as well. But at the end of the day, Let's Go Crazy, I think, does it the best. And for the final build of the week, we're running something interesting here. It is Druids, Savages, Summoners, and Scaled. Guys, this is a really cool build, and let me explain why. So first of all, the latest patch that hit has modified certain units with their 3-star abilities. So for instance, Venomancer, when, hits, when he hits 3 stars, his cooldown for the Plague Wards, which are going to get increased magic resistance, are his only 3 seconds. Put a Void Stone or Sight through the Vise on him, and he's going to be putting Plague Wards everywhere. You might even have to give him more space to spawn Plague Wards. Fantastic. Shadow Shaman is actually going to basically uh, hex somebody at three stars with with the wards so you're gonna get wards and then you're gonna get the chicken effect oh get an octarine on shadow shaman get an octarine on shadow shaman and just just enjoy the show because that is fantastic you can three-star shadow shaman more realistic though more realistic is three-starring nature's prophet with something like a void stone because you're gonna get the nature's calls they're gonna come out but they're gonna be coming from the rear line to attack the squishies it's fantastic so it lets you be a little more creative with the positioning and the nice thing about druids you're pretty likely to have Nature's Prophet at three stars because all he has to do is have it as be at two stars, and you have another two star, you know, tree and protector or whoever else, and he's getting one of them are guaranteed to be at three stars. So it's much easier to actually take advantage of the Nature's Prophet ability. I think that's why it's a little less game breaking than the other ones. Like Shadow Shamans is ridiculous. Um, it's basically his old ability of hex with the serpents. It's such a huge buff. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm running uh, Sven as well because I find he's pretty uncontested, and you get a moonshirt on him, and he can be an absolute just. 
machine, an absolute machine. Uh, and overall, guys, everything else is as you would expect. I would put like a refresher on Lone Druid, a Moon Shard on Sven. You know, get uh, you know, get uh, you know something good on uh, Lycan as well, Butterfly, whatever. You know, Bristleback in a Chainmail. But at the end of the day, this is a truly fantastic build. I do like healing support in Essex here because I want the Golem. Uh, the Golem's fantastic. The plan here, by the way, with the Nessex positioning, you want to protect her so she actually gets the Golem cast. He's going to self-cast, and then he's going to move, and the uh, the Archer should spawn right there. Or uh, Sven will push up, and the Archer will spawn right there. So the Archer should be able to spawn without issue. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I would be more than happy to answer them. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a very special thank you to all of my wonderful subscribers. Take care, everyone, and I hope that these builds help you find success in Dota Underlords.